Okay, let's get right back into it. We've made our teepee, we decorated the paper, and we made our teepee. And now we're going to make some characters to set in the teepee. As you can see, I have scrap paper left over from our other projects. Um, the projects we made yesterday, and today we're going to use it to make our characters to, that are going to sit inside the teepee. I love doing this. This is so much better than having, you know, playing games on my on on my computer. Oops, playing games on my computer, or um, you know, going out and buying new things. I love this. This helps me to take my mind away from any troubles that I have, or anything that's too serious and sad. So I love I love doing this. So I'll sit here for hours and draw and make things and do the three dimensional, you know, little illustrations that I've shown you like Dixie's house. But today, we're going to finish up this project by making a couple of really easy characters that I made up um, to sit inside, to go inside and play. Um, I haven't completely planned this out yet, because I don't. I just kind of do it. But we're going to jump into the first character, which is Dixie. And Dixie is really just circles, a couple of, some circles, and a triangle, for the most part. I'm going to make the body, it's one circle, Dixie's head is another circle, which is almost as big as the body, but not quite. I'm making his head as big, almost as big as the body, because when children are little, little, um, it seems that their bodies and their heads are about the same size. When we start to grow into adulthood, our heads become much smaller in comparison to our bodies. The measurements are different. So I'm going to keep this his head big. We've got one, two circles. Oh no, I could have started again. Wait a minute. Let me do it again because I forgot. He has a plume of feathers coming off his head. I've got to make room for it on my little scrap of paper. So one, One, two circles. That's it. Okay. Basic shape of Dixie. Here's his plume. Sometimes I make it much higher, but today we're only going to make it that high so he can fit inside the teepee. Okay. And then there's a triangle off the front. That's it. Pretty much. Then we've got a, a tail because birds need tails in order to fly. They help direct them. They help them get through the wind. Go where they need to be like the rudder on our boat. We've got another circle in the middle of his face because Dixie wears glasses. And as silly as it sounds, when Dixie is flying, he's also wearing uh, roller skates, but he's not going to wear roller skates today. And then Another circle within the circle, that's Dixie's eye. Okay, now we're going to have a second character that was really easy. Circle, 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 circle. Triangle, whoop, whoop, that's it. Okay, who do we want to pick? Well, you know what? We did, uh, we did Honey Bear yesterday. We did Scooter. Um... You know what? Let's go with Max, the turtle I have renamed Max. Because Max, Max like to, likes to sit down with his legs crossed and read, or just meditate and think. So we're going to start off with an oval. He's very easy to draw, too. An oval. Okay. And then he's. Whoop! Nope. Going to start that again. We don't want him any bigger than that, but we also want him to be able to sit down and cross his legs. So, Max is a circle, oval, oval, a rounded square like yesterday, almost a rectangle, but a rounded square, sitting on top. His legs are rounded rectangles. Okay. 
one there, and then a partial rectangle here, because he's got his legs crossed. Maybe we'll put his, another foot right there. There. Okay. We're going to put a circle for an eye up here. And then we're going to bring his hands down. And his hands, once again, are just two lines. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. We are going to make a little bit more definition in him. We're going to give him a jawline. We're going to take away, I gave him too many lines right there. I took away one line right there, if you can see it. We're going to take away, whoops, sorry about that. The iPad is sitting on an old metal frame, so you'll periodically hear it when I erase or move. You'll hear the iPad hitting the um, metal frame. Anyway, I took away some of the oval back here, added two lines going down into his turtle shell. Now the fun thing about Max is, when Max feels upset, when Max starts to feel upset, or needs quiet time, he just goes inside of his shell, and that way he can sit and think in peace and quiet, and not get upset. Or sit and think, is this something worth getting upset over or not? That's what I love about Max. That and he's an adventurer. And he's a kind friend. So now we're going to do the top of the shell. We had this all rounded up top, but the turtle shell is going to come down a little bit like that. Just kind of two lines coming down just a little bit, and then one right down the middle, like on a real turtle. Okay? Now we're going to take our pens. Here, we'll, we'll tackle Max first really easy. It's all you want. Okay? I like to do his eye first. Again, another another circle where the lines don't meet, but it's okay. If you want your lines to meet, you can do that. Give him his jaw. Give him his neck. Give him the back of the neck. Oh, this is collar. This is collar bones or the shell. Okay. Oop, bringing two lines down like that. Let's do his legs. They're rounded, rounded rectangles again. That's all they are. And then his arms coming down. Okay, that's it. That's it. Now let's tackle Dixie. His eye, his little eye, his glasses. Okay. His feather, because that cuts off part of the circle on his head. Gives it a little bit of an angle. I'm going to tackle his face, and I'm not going to come down here with the lines. I'm just going to go up like this. Just like that. His body. Oops. Sorry if it's hard to see me, or see the lines that I'm making while I'm making them. There's his tail. Oop. There's his, there's his body. He's got a jaw as well, so we're just going to do that to indicate his jaw. His jaw. Okay. And we're going to come in, do a little of this. That's where his beak meets his face. And there's Dixie sitting down. Usually has little stick legs, but he and he and Max are sitting down. They're they're having a talk. They're visiting. Ooh, I forgot Max's uh, 
center line on his shell. He also has a shell, I mean, a line right around his belly. Real turtles have more sections to their belly than that. I just don't like to make things overly complicated. All right, let's take a thinner pen if you have one and do their eyes, okay? These are again just lines and I do them at an angle. Do them at an angle. Really simple stuff here. I think I want Max's eyes a little darker, so there we go. Okay, Let's take scissors. Now one of the things in my story, in my mind, about Max and Dixie, or any of the characters in the books, are that they're very, very different. Each character is very, very different from the other. They're not the same. And yet, they still work together. They're, they still work together as friends to build community and to make Scooter Town the best town they can live in. In one story, Dixie is very, very controlling. He means to do something kind for everyone, but it, it just becomes a, con a matter of him controlling everything. In the end, all of his friends rebel. They go with his original idea, and I won't tell you what it is right now, but his original idea, they go with it, but they redesign it so it's more, it works better for them because each character, like each person, has their own abilities. And that's something Dixie wasn't taking into account. That each character has their own background, their own experiences, their own abilities, and their own difficulties. And even though Dixie almost ruined this event that he had organized. He built something they could take and make their own, and Dixie was included in the end. Dixie is never excluded, no one is. No one gets left behind. It's a favorite phrase of mine. have mean girls going on in Scooter Town. We have kindness. Okay. So there's our two characters. That was so easy. Look at it. That only took a few minutes. And I was talking the whole time, too. Okay. So now we got to find a way to get them to stand up. Yesterday I used paper... Uh, toilet paper rolls and glue. It didn't work out particularly well because the, the glue made the paper weight wet and made it buckle. So we just want to avoid that. Plus we don't need anything big and heavy. We don't need big and heavy in there. We just need something small and light. So we're going to take some more of the scrap paper. Cut it to the height of each character. The width matters, but not that much right now, because that's something we can always fix. It's the height. So this is going to fit perfectly behind Max. We're just going to take it. Oops. Put a little bit of glue on it. And again, this is something you can take these and photocopy or copy them now. If you have a, a printer, you can copy these and print them out so you have them for other projects that we're going to do. All right, so I put glue on there. I'm rolling up this piece of paper. And whoops, I made a boo boo. We want it wide enough 
so it can stand up like that. I'm going to make sure that it's heavy enough too. And it didn't make his little legs flat. All right, let's see how this one goes. If this doesn't work, we can just make another one. It's not a big deal. Um, there's my tape. I'm going to try my tape. If you don't have tape at home, use your glue stick. Like I said I, before, I don't always have tape at my house. I don't know why. I go to the dollar store and I look at it and then I don't get it. And it's okay. Alright, so I've taped, actually, ooh, that worked out pretty well. I taped my little roll to the back of Max. Look at he's standing up. So that's going to work out great. We'll do the same thing with Dixie. Dixie, I need a, another piece of scrap paper. That's where I started my first Dixie. We don't throw anything out. We didn't throw out old Dixie, the one that wasn't going to work. And look, we get to use it. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here or tape, whatever you've got. I'm just going to roll it up. There it is. See if it'll work. Yep. Whoop. <laughs> See if it'll work. Yep, it's tall enough for Dixie, but not too tall and not too wide. That'll work. I think. I apologize if you don't have any tape. Again, use your glue stick if that's what you have. Sometimes I have to use masking tape, which is a brown tape. Sometimes I use, I don't know, I just use whatever I can find to make this work. And there goes Dixie. Now Dixie, whoop! Hmm. They're together, but they're not really looking at each other, and that bothers me. They're kind of looking beyond each other. So I'm going to take Dixie, kind of reposition him, see how this does. I'm turning him a little bit, putting the tape back on. Hmm. Not sure I'm liking that. I want them. I want Dixie up a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is make a little pillow for Dixie to sit on. See, how big do we need to make it? Uh, we're going to make it about... Pillow's going to be about that big. Just about that big. So I'm going to make the pillow by just making a rectangle. Not too big a one. A rounded edged rectangle. Okay. So, yep. rounded edged rectangle that Dixie will be able to sit on. Okay, just like that. I'm going to take that piece of paper off because that's not going to work now. Let's cut that out. Again, not cutting right along the lines, giving, the, giving it room between the line and the edge of the paper, the cut that I'm making. We want that breathing room. Now we're going to take Dixie. Let's see. How high does Dixie need to be? 
We don't want them looking at each other like they're angry. I could have made Dixie with his beak open so it looked like he was smiling, but he didn't. Yeah, I don't want them to look angry at each other. Because we want them to be friends. Yeah, they both look a little startled. Okay, I, I think I'm just going to glue, put a little bit of glue on this. I hope it doesn't buckle. Probably will. It's okay. I'm going to put Dixie right about there. Oops, sorry about that. For some reason, uh, the uh, easel that the camera's sitting on keeps rocking, or keeps making noise. There they are. Dixie looks a little unkind in that. We don't like that. It's all right. Maybe he's sitting and listening, thinking. Okay. Why don't we take... Get another piece of paper. That's super big. You don't need it that big. We need something that's gonna set. Right about there. Okay. And we'll take it, put some glue down. See if this fits behind him. Look at I just rolled it up like that. Now let's see if it fits behind him. Yep, fits back there perfectly. See? Sometimes this takes me a few times to get things right. That's okay. There. Now they're talking. Oop, let me turn it. Now they're talking. Or maybe they're thinking about what the other person said. Or the other character said. I like to think of this teepee. Ooh. I like to think of this teepee as a reading teepee. I made them a little big for the teepee, but the world won't end. It's okay. We can always take this apart. In fact, I can do that. I don't mind. I can widen it. Widen it a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger. So they can both fit inside. this does. Whoop. There they are. Now they both fit. It's just adjusting and readjusting and not getting upset. 
doesn't matter and it's fixable. Just like my paintings. It's all fixable. There we go. So now what I think I want them to do is I think I want them with some books. Books are a wonderful idea. So why don't we make some books? Maybe they're discussing some books that they read. So let's make a small stack of books. I'm just going to take this little piece of paper and books, once again, are just rectangles. So I'm going to make a stack. We're going to start with one stack of little rectangles. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to take my brush pen, <clears throat> my very fancy brush pen, and outline. Lines, the lines aren't perfectly straight. It's okay. Books aren't always perfectly straight. If you could see over in that corner, there's actually a stack of books sitting there and a stack of books sitting in front of me. And one of them is my was my dad's dictionary. It's a mess. So on the on the spine on the outside of the book, there's always the title. And what we're going to do, maybe we'll do this in pencil. We're just going to make squiggly lines that kind of mean the title. Or we can write a word. I just wrote dictionary. Can't really see it. Oh, there it is. Dictionary. And then. This is just for fun, just for play anyway. So now we've got a small stack of books. There they are. Oop, come on. Okay. We're going to cut them out. We could make a bunch of stacks of books since that's the reading tent, the reading teepee. But for right now, we're just going to stick with this one stack. All right, and now to get it to stand up, because a stack of books stands up, one on top of the other. take another piece of paper and roll it up. I'm going to put some glue on the back of it. And we'll see if this works. It may not. That's too small. Oh, I've got this old roll. I'm going to take that. Just cut that down. This is the one that didn't quite fit Dixie a minute ago. Yeah, that's perfect. And I'm just going to glue this one on. We'll see if it buckles. If it does, it's okay. A little bit of glue on the back. There we go. That seems a little big. Wait a minute. Adjusting my thinking <clears throat> as we go along. All right, there we go. There. Now they get a stack of books. Maybe they're discussing which book they're going to read. All right, now that took about 30 minutes, a little under 30 minutes. I think what we're going to do, let me see if I can find. So, oh, here it is. All right. I think we're going to make a background for the teepee, for the teepee, for Dixie, and for Max and their, and their books in their reading tent. 
We're going to make something very similar to this. And again, this is really easy. You're going to love it. You're going to love how quick this goes. Okay, this one, this one that we're looking at is almost the same size as the page, but not quite. You can make it the size of the page, or you can make it a little bit, you can make it small. Um, what we're going to do are make bushes, so you can make them small, you can make them very tall. Um, this, you can make them whatever size you like. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just draw a line right there. That tells me how tall it'll be, the bushes will be. And I'm going to do this. I'm just going to make shapes, just random shapes. Bushes are round, trees have, are round and oval, they're very soft. There's no big sharp angles, not like on a building. So I like to keep everything just kind of flowy and easy. Okay. Hard to see. But it's okay. Kind of like the clouds we drew the other day, or yesterday. Okay? It's a basic idea. It's all we're going for is a, one big, big basic shape, or a couple of shapes. Right, let's do this first. When I'm drawing them, I take my, my pen, my fancy pen, and I draw them. I go like this. Right, let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm barely paying attention. I'm letting the pen just do what the pen does. This is going to look like a squiggly line box. Now I'm going to take it and break it down into smaller shapes because we don't want one big bush. What we're looking at are a bunch of trees or bushes all mixed together. So I'm going to make some lines. Okay. I'm going to break it up. We don't have to be, they don't have to be perfect. They can be split up in a hundred different ways. It's up to you. It's how much time and effort you want to put into it, the look you want. Doesn't matter. And even if you're doing this and you feel like you've made a mistake, it doesn't feel right, I want you to keep going anyway. Because I have uh, something else we're going to add to it. I have some things else we're going to add to it that's going to make it feel really cool and a lot like the bushes you see um, in the park or when you're out walking. Okay? That's what we have right now. Know, maybe I'll make one more line. Yep. Now I'm happy. This way, I'm going to grab my glue stick off the floor. Ugh, I don't want to forget that. I'm trying up. Now I'm going to take my thinner pen. This is where a Sharpie would be good if you don't have fancy markers, um, like my pens. This one has a smaller, a smaller uh, nib, smaller point to it. And we're just going to do this. Ready? Scribble, 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 scribble. We're just going to scribble. We're going to make crazy lines all over the place. And you see how I've done that? Look at it. It's not exact. I don't care. And I went, I'm not only going over the black lines, but I'm also going in, the, in between the black lines. 
because this is what vegetation does. This is what plants do. They grow where they grow. They're wild, and as much as we think we can tame them, we cannot, much like the human heart. So think of these bushes like your heart when you're very excited, very happy. Or your thoughts when you can't quite get them under control. Or just don't think about anything at all and just scribble, which is my favorite. Let it go. Just draw. We need to break that up right there. All right, look at that mess. So we got the big fat lines on the outside. We've got the fat lines breaking it up. And then we've got these skinny little lines scribbling out vegetation, plants in between. They're abstract. Abstract meaning they don't make sense. And now, oh, we're going to break this up just a little bit more, I just realized, because this is too... Too many big spaces, and that's going to be important in a sec. You don't want too many big, big spaces. Or maybe you might. Okay, look. Scribbleistic. What we're going to do now, oops, are make lines. You see the lines? And they're all going in different directions. Look at the tip that makes up texture. We're going to do that. We're going to take the spaces where we've scribbled and made sections, and we're going to draw lines. All right, let me see if you can see what I'm doing. I may not be communicating myself well. We're just we're drawing lines, and we're drawing lines right over the scribbles, too. Look at We're drawing right over the scribbles, as well as the big and fat, big and fat marker lines. And it's important to turn your paper, just like I do when I'm painting, turn your paper. So you don't have your lines going all the same way all the time. Look. See what I'm doing? Let me turn it this way. My son was little and he had to do reports. He and I would sit down and do projects like this together to get them. We'd do projects like this together. I think once it was a science project. That's where I learned to work very fast. Or something like it. Look at my lines are going into my lines, are going into my scribbles, are going into other lines. Look at they're not straight up and down, they're not straight sideways. I'm not even looking the most part. If it isn't quick and easy for you, I don't want you to panic. I 
I've been working on this for this idea 15 years. I've been illustrating and re-illustrating this book for 15 years. Some of this is kind of new to me, but I've had a long time to think about it, too. Okay, there's our book, Bush. There's our background. Okay. how it's going to go because they're in the woods. Let's cut this out real quick, not cut the bottom. Well, we can. It doesn't really matter. We've got, I've got a lot of scribbles outside the big black lines. So I'm just going to cut around all the scribbles. Because I think they're cool. We do have to keep the bottom kind of flat-ish, so I can cut off some of those lines and the world won't end. It'll be okay. There we go. There it is. Now we're going to do one more thing for our little bushes that I didn't talk about before. I'm going to add some leaves. If you look, I've got little leaves. Those were added on. Those weren't drawn in. They were cut out. They were drawn, cut out, and pasted on. So we're going to do the same thing here. Now, I don't want you to panic. You can draw it in with your pencil. I'm not going to, because watch. Just like the feathers, the feathers we drew earlier, give it a spine. Ready? Sorry. I'm move this. We do a line. Then we're going to make a rounded rectangle. Almost an oval, almost a circle, but a rectangle at the same time. That's it. That's a leaf. We're going to do it again. Ready? Oops. Oh, this is so hard. Okay. We're going to go line, 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 line. That's it. That's three leaves. We're going to make more of them. Let me cut, cut this out and show you. Watch. Those leaves are a little bigger than I would normally make, but I want to make sure you can see it. Watch. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back. Not too, too much. A little bit. Hopefully it won't buckle. Sorry about that. Sorry about the noise. There we go. Let's make a couple more, okay? And I like to make my leaves very, very simple. I like to have a whole lot of them, but 
but I like them simple. I don't like spending a lot of time on something like this. It makes me anxious when I have to spend a lot of time on one project and making sure that it's right or perfect or whatever. It just makes me, I can't. I used to get very, very angry because things weren't perfect. I used to get very, very angry and upset if things took me too long. I have a lot more patience now, but I still try to make sure that something like this isn't taking my whole day, because I want to move on. I want to have fun with it, and I want to move on and do other things, do other projects. So you see, it's just one, two, three, that's it. One, two, three. One, two, three. I need that one small. One, two, three. One, two, three. Whoops, I left a big gap right there between those two leaves. So maybe I'll do this. One, two lines. It's a leaf in the background. Now I'm going to add another one. One, two. I got a small cluster of leaves. Okay, now I'm going to cut them out. You can make as many clusters of leaves as you like. I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to stick with the five that I have. The one that we made already, and then the four that we just made. So, as I said, I don't like things to take too long, and as I said repeatedly, I don't like things to be quote-unquote perfect, because there's no such thing. I like the cutting part to be easy, one of the easier parts of this. Or I get anxious and frustrated. So we keep the shape simple, the cutting simple. That helps my head to relax a little bit. I know there's people that are really, really good with scissors and they can cut intricate designs really elaborate designs. I don't I, I can't do that. I can't see well enough to do it. I also don't have the temperament. I want to have the temperament. I want to have the ability to cut really pretty, intricate things, but I just don't always have it in me. So we keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay? So now we've got all these little leaves. Gonna figure out where I want to put them. I'm gonna glue one right there. I'm gonna glue one. I think I'm gonna glue one way up there. Way up there. I think 
I'll glue another one over there. I'm covering up some of my lines, but it's okay. Put one way over there because that'll be fun. Oof, not a glue. There we go. We've just made a bush. All right, now this time we are going to take our toilet paper rolls. Not that dirty one. We could roll up um, some scrap paper, but I don't think I have scrap paper big enough. So, wait a minute. Yes, I do. Let me begin. Here. I have this from earlier. When we cut out the bush. I got the top half of the page. So I'm going to cut that. It's going to work out great. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to add some glue to this edge right here. Roll it over. Roll it over, over. There. I made a roll. Glue or tape, whatever works, whatever you've got. There we go. Second roll. This time I am just going to tape these guys down, see if that works out okay. Oops. Get the tape sticking up. Maybe we'll cut this down a little bit. now. Oops. Again, sorry for the rattle. It's always something. Rattling noise when I move my drawing desk. The iPad hits the metal frame and boop, boop, boop. It's always something. Nothing's perfect. And it's okay. All right, so I taped them down. Let's see if they stand up okay. Let's see if the bush stands up. Oh, it does, look at that. Look at that. And this is slightly curved. If I put another roll back here, I could curve it this way. I could do a little bit more, but right now it's curving this way, which means it's gonna cur curve towards our teepee, which will sit right there. We got a whole, a whole thing going on. There's Dixie. Oops. Let's put you that way. There. Make sure you can see. There's Dixie. Where's Max? Oops. Dixie and Max. And they're in discussion. And where's our little stack of books? There they are. Where's our little stack of books? Look what we did! Look what we did. This was really fun. Um, and we'll do this again tomorrow, okay? We'll have another project tomorrow. This was so much fun. All right. Ciao. Ciao. Hi guys, what are you doing? I'm back. Can I sit with you? Mm. <laughs> Ciao.